All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today you join me at my kitchen table. I am still uh, waiting to put art up on my walls. I will get there. I just moved in. Give me a break. Today, I thought I would answer another question here and ask Zach because that's the whole point of the series. And today we're going to talk about my equipment, what I use to film my car reviews. I get a lot of questions about this, what camera I use, what microphones and things like that. So I thought I'd do a brief rundown. This is the 2024 edition. This is what I've been rocking with since... February of this year, just the microphones, but everything else is years and years old. This is what I've been using for a very long time. So I thought I'd just run you through it today. Give you relative prices. The prices might have changed because I've had some of this equipment for a while. Um, but yeah, so if you had any questions about it, I hope that I can answer it through that. So first of all, we'll start off with the case itself. This is a Pelican knockoff case from Harbor Freight. This has been hands down the most reliable, the most sturdy, the best piece of equipment that I've gotten. If you're looking for a camera case, ladies and gentlemen, this is the one to go with. First of all, it was 60 bucks as opposed to, I think the Pelican equivalent is like 300. It is waterproof. I've never tested it, but there's this little valve here at the front that you can actually open and close. And what's funny is that when I go film in like high altitude areas or if it's like super humid out, it does, I know the seal works because when I went to go film in Denver, I hadn't opened this case since Illinois. And so when I went to go open it, it was like opening a pop can. It was like, which is kind of cool. Anyway, so this is a knockoff Pelican case from Harbor Freight. Can't recommend it enough. It is so, so sweet. But we can open it up and on the outside you'll see all these stickers that I've accumulated in my travels with all that stuff, I kind of like that. But open it up and you do get this nice foam on the inside. The original foam down here was pull apart foam, which lasted a long time, but it, it over time it would kind of degrade. Um, so I ended up switching it out. So first we'll talk about the microphones. This is the newest addition to the collection. This is the DJI Mic 2s, I believe, and they are wireless mics. So I'm obviously using one on my shirt. What I love about these is that they are wireless. I actually did a video with Boosted John and he recommended these. I was always skeptical or, or nervous to go wireless because I thought that they would have interference. Knock on wood, I have never had interference with these. These are absolutely wonderful. They work kind of like Apple AirPods where the case actually charges them and they have, I believe, eight hours of life per, or battery life when you take them out and they have like, 15 hours of onboard memory, which is great. Um, and you can pull out this little receiver and hook this into something, but I like just the standalone microphones. They do have a clip, so you could clip them onto things, like said, or what I use more often is the back has a detachable magnet, and so what you do is you slide the magnet inside your shirt and then clip it on, you'll hear here. There you go, you clip it on. Um, and then it, it works through most fabrics. Um, but if you have a jacket on, you just clip it onto the jacket. So these are extremely versatile. This is one of the most expensive things. It was $250, um, but I would say well worth it. Charges off of USB-C on the back. I charge the case like once every two weeks and that's with filming cars every day. Um, so that is super, super great. Also, it does come with these wind covers. That's what you'll see in the videos. It does help with wind, so I can drive with the windows down and you'll still hear me, but it also helps a lot with like P's and B's uh, because without it, it's like, it'll like pop the audio, but this kind of diffuses it a little bit. So second of all, we'll talk about the camera that I'm actually using to shoot with this right now is a Canon SL3. I'll cut to a cell phone clip of it. Right now it has the 24 millimeter lens on it, which is about $120. Uh, the camera body itself, I want to say it was like 600. Um, and it'll do, it will do 4K at 24 frames a second, which I don't like. I shoot in 1080 at 60 frames a second. So then as you see all those like swooping shots of cars, I actually slow it down to 30 frames a second. Two reasons for this. First of all, it makes the clip a little bit smoother. And when I do digitally stabilize the clip, it just has more information to work with, has twice the amount of frames, so it's a smoother stabilization. But also, 
I can shoot a car for 10 minutes, get 10 minutes of footage, and now I have 20 minutes of footage to play with because I shot at double speed and slowed it down to 30. Most things that you see are going to be 30 frames a second. Actual feature films, I believe, are 24 frames a second. 30 frames a second is pretty much the standard, so shooting in double that and slowing it down, you now have twice the footage to work with, which is great. If I, which I actually did this today, I got a 1.5 second clip of a car that I was filming. Well, slowed down, that's three whole seconds, which is about the this length of clip that I like. So that is a big, big help, and that's all shot. I use mostly 64 gigabyte micro SD cards. I don't like going bigger, just because I have had cards corrupt, and there's just less stuff to lose. If you fill up a 64 card and it corrupts, you lose 64 gigabytes, but if you have a full 128 and it corrupts, you lose twice the amount of footage if that makes sense. Similarly for the Canon SL3, this is a 55 to 250 lens. Um, this is what all the thumbnails are taken with. I really like this lens. It has a little bit more of a cinematic look. If you've ever seen like the back end of a car and it's like the detail or the, uh, the logo of the car and the background is all blurry, that's usually taken with this. This is exteriors only, the 24 millimeters for interiors. Um, but I will do 24 millimeter for the outside and the inside, but this is just outside. Um, it has that more artistic look, like I said, blurred background. Um, so all of the nicer cinematic shots were probably shot on this. Um, and so those are the only two lenses that I rock with. I would like to at some point get like some like 80 millimeter fixed lens, like sort of middle ground, or honestly probably like a 50, 55, something like that. Um, but I've also never had a big emphasis on the cinematics of the car. As long as you can see the car clearly, I don't need to do like the transitions and all this stuff. We're here to see the car. I'm not here to try to flex my artistic vision. Um, but yeah. So last piece of equipment that I use, I, I run and gun pretty light. This is a GoPro Hero 10 Black. Uh, no. It's a Hero 11 Black. This is great, it will shoot up to 5K, but I film in 4K, um, the interior shots. So this is put up on the windshield looking at me. The intro, outro, driving, me actually driving the car is this, the POV stuff is this, um, and then the walk around is this. But everything else is shot with the camera that I'm using now. Um, GoPro has been absolutely wonderful. I've been using GoPros since day one. Maybe I'll switch up to something in the future, but I love how versatile they are. They can really take a beating, which is nice. The only big issue has been overheating. Um, but honestly, as time has gone on, the, the overheating has been less and less. Um, really like the GoPros. Like I said, I re record myself in 4K because then since I export in 1080, that gives me the ability to crop in and still export in 1080 um, and keep that quality up. So I actually, yeah, de-res, shout out to Tron. I de-res uh, some of the shots that you'll see. Um, but that's it. And so that's all the equipment. Of course, I bring the big friggin' bottle when I go, but that's it. That is all my equipment. So I show up to your house or to review your car. I have this, I have the big friggin' bottle, and that's it. Big reason for that, and some people have asked, why don't you get a drone? Why don't you get like a professional gimbal? Why don't you get more, you know, X, Y, Z? Reason for it is just ease. I need to be in and out in some reviews. If I'm gonna shoot nine reviews in one day, I can't have 10 different things of equipment and drones and this and that. Occasionally, I'll bring the tripod that the camera's on right now. It's an Amazon Basics $14 tripod, but I honestly don't bring it to all the shoots. If I know that I'm going to do like a stand-up part, or if I know that the car has uh, like headlight wipers that I'll set up, or like pop-up headlights, I'll bring it, um, but I honestly don't bring it to everything. I like being able to get in and out of stuff. I just toss this in whatever car I'm driving, and I go. I throw my little green shirt on, and I'm there. Um, it also makes, when I film across the country, if I go on an airplane, this is super easy to toss onto an airplane. The only downside is that a lot of people use boxes like this for firearms, and so I do get questioned quite a bit about it. I actually went to Discount Tire uh, to get my snow tires put on my Mazda 3, it was probably three years ago, and the guy at Discount Tire came in, he's like, we can't work on your car. And I was like, why? Like, it's a brand new Mazda. And they go, well, there's a... 
there's something in the passenger seat and our techs aren't comfortable moving the car while it's there. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh no, you could open it. It's cameras. It's not guns or anything like that. And they're like, oh, cool. Okay. And then that, it was all cool. Um, but like checking into hotels all the time, like I bring this equipment with me and I get some weird looks and I'm like, guys, it's, uh, it's just cameras. So that is one downside of it. Um, but other than that, I love this case. I have dropped it a million times. It has been kicked. It has been abused and it, it absolutely takes it and it protects the, uh, the equipment a lot. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's a rundown of the equipment that I use uh, for the reviews. If you guys have any questions specifically about the equipment that I use that wasn't answered in this video, please leave it in the comments down below and I'll try to respond best that I can. But until next time, good night, everyone.